Hey, everybody, we uh, got some giveaway information for you coming up in a second. And superstar alert, superstar alert, yeah. Michael Brower, get in the chat room. You don't want to miss this. Roll it, Will, Pensado's Place. What's up, everybody? Glad to have you. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not going to be giddy like a little 14-year-old kid uh, yeah. like I was last week. <laughs> Herb and I went beavers and butthead on you. Man. We took this. Oh, my God. Look at my hair, Herb. Son of a bitch. So um, Herb and I went from Charlie Rose to beavers and butthead in one 15-minute one segment. Well, well, beavers. I don't know if I did the butthead part. We got to class the place up today. Michael Brower's here. Michael has the greatest sense of humor of any guest we've had, but Perfect. I, 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 I got to be respectful. That's uh, exciting. Though. So Michael's coming up in a little bit. What's up, Herb, my wing man? Uh, how are I don't you? get to say that I like to meet Herb, my wing man. Everybody knows you now. Well, more than this, me. it's because you, because you. I show. understand that people are even manufacturing equipment named after you now. Well, we, we, we have to mention that first of all. Let's say to you, congratulations, you another. Uh, <laughs> you look <afraid. laughs> like, Your Boy Scout medal. Didn't you have another number one uh, record that we talked about? Oh, we got them all over the world. You know. <laughs> which which, which one is this one? Nobody cares about that. All Actually, people care about is... They just uh, email me. They don't email you. It's NBC. <laughs> NBC. Uh, NBC. Uh, NBC. Uh, but, NBC. But congratulations. Thanks, on there. man. Which record was it? I don't have a clue. That's one of, one of the ones I did with Dave. I think it's Australia. Oh, it is. Absolutely. I talked to Dave yesterday. It's uh, the Australian Idol guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. The record came in, a uh, record that you mixed, and uh, of yeah. the famous Huff Brothers out of Nashville. Yeah, Dave and Dan. Dave, I, Dave did this one by himself. He, he, it's really good. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. And, and they're great guys. Um, in fact, we could give Dave's address. If you want to mail $45 to Dave Huff <laughs> down in Nashville, he'll, he'll, yeah. he'll take it. He'll, he'll tell you where to buy the record. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, obviously, you have our normal stuff. Make sure you get to us um, at our all the information um, at Pensado's Place uh, is our Twitter handle. You know, you know, you have a YouTube page, our Facebook stuff, email Pensado's Place at thisweekend.com. Um, and then we've got this cool giveaway stuff with BAE and Michael Lachman, the guys Ooh, that we man. like so much. Uh, the quality of that gear is incredible. Um, it's the BAE DMP 1073. It's a mic pre. So uh, it's a great thing. And the way you enter it is there's a link that's going to pop up right below. That's how you enter it. See that right there? Go to that. All the details will be there. You'll see this little tutorial of Will going through stuff and see, see, see how coordinated we are from a production standpoint. Damn. So that's how you enter it. That's what you do. It's very simple. Good it's, to see all that rehab's paying off for Will. It is been incredible, <laughs> although it's right now. Oh, the twist of flanger. I saw the twist of flanger. Now, now, what you just saw, <laughs> let's give a shout out real quick to Brandon Hackler, one of our tremendous hey, super Hey, Brandon. Fans. Nice job, Brandon. And I got to tell you guys something. What you should really know is how much you're involved with the show. You see that piece that's up right now? Brandon heard. Dave and I have this running joke before we start doing the show about my twizzle flanger. He actually created it. It has certain things on there, knobs that have to do with the show. But my favorite, my favorite switch is up in the right-hand corner where it says Canadian on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why instead of Z, I say Z. Instead of, instead of about, I say a boot. You know, it changes all the Canadian stuff. Brush your teeth with snow. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, that's kind of our homework. Uh, what is great about this, guys, is that this interaction with the show is what's making the show work. Oh, it makes we it love fun. you guys. Um, just another little piece of homework. I think we just passed our 27th country that either tunes in or downloads the show. And we are honored and, and thrilled that, that we're providing a service for you. Kudos to Dave and, and us being pulled this off and Drew. So let's get to the meat of the show. Man, Michael, are you there? Is Michael there? I'm there, Dave. How do I get? Where do I? Where do I see Michael at? First, he's a voice. He's such a superstar. We just need to hear him before we see him. The great Favaz. Absolutely. Angelic. What was the, What was the guy that did the jerky thing in the in the eighties? The, the 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 head that was the voice. They were called the New Boys. No. <laughs> they, they, they'll they'll, think they'll come to you. It'll come to you. It'll come to you. Come to you. <laughs> Michael, man, great to have you on, my friend. Everybody knows what Michael's done, and we're so proud. Uh, as friends of Michael's, that he won the engineering Grammy. Uh, that's the big one, Herb. That's, 
Right. That, major. that that one, it, you notice they don't they don't carry it home on the stage because that one is so big it takes a <laughs> semi to carry. It's a little bigger than the rest. Mm. And like like to put it in perspective. I actually uh, just got it yesterday. Oh wow! Did you really? I, I understand it takes like like um, seven or eight people to carry that thing, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have assistance for that. <laughs> you hear that, Drew? <laughs> and that's all they do all year is wait for the Grammys and yeah. just bring your Grammys to you. <laughs> that's very cool. That's a boring job. <laughs> so, Michael, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embarrass you for a minute. Michael has, uh, of course, he did Battle Studies, the John Mayer record that uh, he worked on with Manny mm -hmm. that we, we discussed a little bit about. Uh, Michael's known most recently for some incredible work on Coldplay. I think all the uh, all the albums that Michael's done on Coldplay have won some sort of Grammy somewhere, sometime. Mm. Looking forward to another one from Michael one of these days. Um, he's done Aerosmith, James Brown, um, gosh, on and on and on. Uh, Herb, I'm going to stop right here for a second. Uh, Michael, I'll, I'm going to hold up for a second. Everybody, I want you to understand something about Michael Brower. <clears throat> He's one of the most generous, sharing people I know. Uh, if you want to know about multibus compression and every detail about it, start off by going to Michael Brower's website, michaelbrower.com. Michael lists all his interviews. He actually takes questions from you. Uh, I spent, I'm actually throwing up little tiny pieces of distressor uh, components. I've, I've got so oh, much overload from, from reading Michael Brower's. Uh, information it's like it's 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 a course in itself in fact skip school go to michaelbrower.com spend six months there and you'll learn everything you need to know about compression and what you don't understand about it we're going to find out today but a wealth of information uh, his credits it took me good grief it took me like an hour to read the credits and I found a couple little hidden gems in there uh, Herb and Michael uh, I don't know if you guys kept up with me on Gear Sluts a couple of years ago. I listed my five favorite, most influential records. One of those Michael did. It was it was called C'est La Vie, Robbie Neville. Incredible. But uh, Michael, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. And I'm having fun and I'm working, which uh, is a good combination. That's good, man. I love uh, your studio. If heaven looks halfway as interesting as your studio, it's going to be a great place to go for us engineers. Well, you know, should I give you a, a tiny little tour oh, here? Oh, man, that'd be incredible. All right, guys, get out your Kleenex. Okay, show me your twizzle flanger. <laughs> I would, but uh, is, this, is this rated for adults? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is actually my favorite rack of all of them. These That's are my delay racks. Oh, wow. So it starts here with a Miyazzi, of which I have a backup. It's from 1962, and it's multi-head, and I've got control. The, the fourth head will feed back, which gives me the reverb. Like, I'll turn it on like this. Look at this little light up there. Isn't that oh, cool? Oh, man. Is that like the Watkins? And then it just starts, yeah, and then there's, right below that, is the Watkins that Charlie modified for me. I've got control over the volume of the different heads. Good. Wait a minute. Here it is. And then um, my favorite Bensons. I got one right here. You know, the Bensons don't run on tape for those guys. This is the one machine that just has a. See if I can do this. It's got a drum. And when I turn it on, it makes a lot of noise. Oh, I love it. Wait a minute. That's why I've got these little things. But, um, sounds like somebody being slowly killed here. If I get all the dirt off this steel head, wow. eventually it gets quiet. But not today. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of my Coldplay guitar sounds came from that early on. Came from the Benson? Came from the Benson. I think on parachutes, I had just purchased a Benson and I think a Swiss Echo, which I still have. I think I'm the only one in the world that has that one. And then, uh, and then this full tone. Everybody knows the full tone. And then I've got a couple of um, I've got these old Moogs, 
Wow, the cable's hanging out. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Shows you last time I used that. And then um, some Altex, which are great for uh, putting, maybe I'll bring a drum bus back and put it across the drums. You know, and just get the really nice sound. Sometimes I put it on vocal. These are the toys I couldn't fit in my rack. <laughs> this is a really cool one. This is a Presto right here. Oh, wow. From New Jersey. And then my, uh, blue you know, stripes. Blue Stripe, which actually belonged to Electric Lady. Wow. You know, a bunch of toys. And then the fun stuff. I'm going to take this off speaker for a second. This is my new rack that I just put together. This is my digital rack. Since I don't go to tape anymore, what I've done is I've really put together a, a sweet setup. And I get, uh, that's my antelopes down there that run everything. And I've got three different converters. I've got my prism, my head, and my burl. Oh, and wow. depending on the kind of music I'm doing, and I've got the Z system, so I can, I can just, well, not me, because I don't know what I'm doing. I can have <laughs> Brian, my assistant, just go right here and pop, 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 pop in a different converter so I can listen to that and see which one wins. Ah, uh, I knew that day was coming, and here it is. Yeah. It's a reality. So now, that, here, that, that rack is mainly for when you just really start missing the good old days when digital was getting started, right? Yeah. <laughs> this rack would have never happened a while ago, but I finally said, all right. But you know you what, know. Michael? I'll, don't stop the tour. I want to continue the tour, right. but this is a good time. You said that, uh, and I thought it was eye-opening, you said if we'd started with digital years ago and analog came in in the last 10 years, we'd all be... Like, oh, man, we don't like that, that analog stuff because uh, how'd you explain it? It was really well stated. I thought, I thought I could steal that as part of my argument. I don't remember, but I'll tell you this. It, it, <laughs> a friend of mine, uh, Chad, who's working on the new Mayor record, they tried to go back to tape. It's too slow. I mean, people go crazy waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too slow. <laughs> the people have absolutely no time for I mean, you know, when the when the reels were rolling back, you could get up, you know, and if you smoked, you could have a cigarette or, you know, you could talk or you could stretch or you could do something. Now with Pro Tools, you're back at the top. You know, you never you never relax. I was it's working go. I was working on a, a, a cameo record years and years ago and it was it was early digital and and and, and uh, the group was used to hearing the from the rewind of the tape I actually had to have a little digital sample made so they would stop asking me what's going on what's going on what's happening what's happening I'm like I'm rewinding I'm rewinding <laughs> Yeah I think I think the difference is simply what you start with that's why you know I I'm never going to get into some argument over what is better digital or analog there is no there's no discussion on this there's no argument you like it you use it you don't like it don't use it, it, it there's so much good digital gear out there now that is getting better and better to recreate the warmth um and the fullness i don't know if warmth is the right word i mean the fullness and and the lack of harshness that early digital came with so why'd you back up michael you know i'm gonna slam you on the word warmth is that what you did just then i know i quickly tried to move away from warmth because i knew that was coming <laughs> warm is another word for dull michael yeah well you know what i do is i brighten up the top when it's warm <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I love you. I love your room, man. I, I tell you what, you said you said um, that um, that you were more interested in hearing the emotion and feeling in something rather than the EQ and the compression in something. And when I'm in that room, uh, it, it looks like when I when I would be in that room, it just it just amplifies your ability to, to just the vibe and everything is. It allows you to kind of get the motivation to work on feelings and emotions. This looks like a very special place, man. Yeah, you know, it, 
I have way too many toys. I admit that. I, I have no problem admitting that. I think, uh, I mean, I even have a zoo. I have a small zoo. I have like these small little, oh, oh there you go. What oh, the hell is I, that? I, 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 keep, I keep animals here. I keep goats. It's really oh. cool. Like yeah, Drew? Just, Are those kind oh, of animals? Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him? <laughs> anyway, um, is that is that the ghost of Jim Henson somewhere in there? You have some old A and M gear in there somewhere. Listen, there is there is weird things that go on in here. You can ask my assistant. I'll I'll, I'll turn around and like I'll have one of my master gains on like like on this uh, on this shadow here. Uh huh. I'll come back and this knob will be like up two. Why? Why did that happen? Uh, I didn't. That, Drew, you can't Drew, even do that if you knocked into it. Yeah, Drew will tell you the same thing. I, I, I don't look at the knobs, and so sometimes they're all just different, different ways, and then I see <laughs> that they're different, and it scares me. So I don't know. I, but you know, to answer your, your question, I think. Um, I so I got to plug my power back in. One second. No trouble. In the speaker. This is Pensada's uh, place. Ain't nobody watching. <laughs> there we go. We good? We're good. Um, you know, I think that it's always for me, I was a musician first. And when I decided I wanted to be an engineer, my biggest concern was um, that I might lose what it feels like to perform. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. That's that's true. That's true. I always I, 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 we have we have such similar backgrounds because I kind of feel the same way. I, I I I I I feel like I just want to sit in front of the speakers and get to come out of the speakers. Whatever I felt back when I used to play live. You were a drummer, right? Right. You still play much? No. You know, I actually there was a drum set a couple of years ago, and I sat down at it and I almost fell over. I, I <laughs> could not get both feet going and the, both hands. And that was like amazing to me that I could have forgotten all of that but you know I always knew when I, be, when I was going to become an engineer that it was going to be easier because I only had to use two hands <laughs> but um yeah, well that, 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 that's a magazine article that in the making there ambidextrous mixing <laughs> hey man back back in 08 when you were working on the on the Coldplay record uh, in 08 you mentioned oh, eight would have been which record? Uh, oh, X and Y, maybe? I think so. I don't remember that. Oh, but what I do remember is that, is that you said the only plug-in you used was a Renaissance DS or in a, in a, in a, uh, uh, a Digi DS, -er, and everything else was analog. Nowadays, like today, records that you're mixing, and you know, in the last few months, is that still the ratio, or are you are you using a little more plugins? Well, what I get from uh, depends on the project. A lot of projects already have all the plugins um, across. You know, they haven't printed any of those. Everything is coming up, so I need to have a whole arsenal of everybody's plugins. And you know, the way I see plugins today are no different than when we used to mic an amp and we'd bring it back up on if we were doing 48 and we had the luxury of two tracks we'd have one would be direct one would be the amp and the room and all the stuff we have you take the plug-in out it's literally like listening to the direct so today nobody's miking up the amp and doing all this cool stuff they've got in essence the same thing as what the plug-in would do. So it, you know, it's an integral part. I got one session once where they took all the plugins out. And the artist walks in and he goes, I don't know, man, doesn't sound right. And I go, man, I can't even come close to make it, making it sound right. I mean, I don't understand. Nothing sounds good. And it turns out that, that the guy who gave me the files basically gave me the direct sounds and they had spent hours working on the guitar sounds with a plug-in and you know <laughs> I was like it doesn't work like that you know it's like I'm not gonna spend four days trying to come up with all the sounds you already came up and it's it's in a sense like trying to re-mic everything that's ridiculous give me the plug-in mm -hmm. are there any plug-ins that um, 
<clears throat> the reason I'm asking you all these plug-in questions is because um, a majority of the people watching the show just at this point in their career, they just can't afford to get a lot of the, the, the older analog gear. It's just so expensive, but they can't afford plug-ins. So we're always looking to help out the guys watching the show to kind of give them the confidence and the and the, uh, to look for, for for you know less less expensive versions of the analog stuff by buying plugins. Well, you, and I, you and I were talking a couple of months ago or a couple of weeks ago that you really like the uh, uh, AD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I uh I really didn't start using plugins on my own. Obviously, as I said, if the sessions comes with it, I'm using it. But as you can see, I have more than enough hardware here that has all the compressors and equalizers I need. On um, so why try to look for a plugin that emulates that? There's no reason for me, but um I was asked to do some testing with a UAD plug-in, uh, trying to compare. I have a Manly Massive Passive, and they wanted me to compare it to theirs. And I think you've had Tony on here, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I love that guy. Man. Oh, me too. So cool. He was telling me about a little bit about the UAD, and some other friends were telling me about it. And I said, well, you know, it's just... It's the same stuff that I already have in my racks. I'm not really quite sure why I'd be interested. But anyway, I said, I'll try it. And I did this A-B test where I tried, I cranked it all the way. Because you know when you're going to hear the limitations of a plug-in is when you completely take it over the top. Mm -hmm. and then you hear the artifacts of if it's digital or not. So I beat it against a snare, a kick, a bass, a guitar. And... It was I, you know, I brought one up with my analog, massive passive, and the other channel that I molded the guitar to or the bass was with the plug-in, and it was identical every time. So wow. I was really, really impressed. And then I started listening to their other toys, and yeah, it's one, it, it's one of the first times that it dawned on me. You know, I mean, I've got an ADL 670. I can't use it on 10 things. I can only use it on either a stereo or a mono, two monos, or my stereo bus if I want. But when I was playing with their UAD, I was like, wow, this this Fairchild sounds really good. And I'm thinking, well, I can only use it on this. I thought, wait a minute, I can use it on, I've got 15 of these if I want. <laughs> I thought, what a deal. <laughs> this is great. That's cool. You know, it just opened my mind up because so the, limita long the sonic limitations started vaporizing at that point, right? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, and then I started listening to them, and they were so warm, and, and it felt great. And then I started playing with their EQs, kind of EQs that I'm already very familiar with, the Helios and the Trident. Um, and I had this one record that was just it it needed a different character and what the way it was recorded just didn't seem to bring out enough of the uniqueness and um and so i thought well i'm just going to put helios and trident over everything everything every instrument <laughs> because i've got as many as i want and it made all the difference. It made the record. Are you serious? So I was sold at that point because I didn't need to do that. I was desperate to, to you know, to try something. And um, the Helios was a UAD plug-in. Yeah. Well, at it's this a, point in time, I should oh, mention that Erica owes me a phone call over there. Erica, call me, Erica. <laughs> Damn it. So I, uh, you know, I, I said, wow, this is great. You know, I'll endorse this product. I mean, yeah, I couldn't that, imagine myself ever endorsing a digital plug-in, but um, this company, you can tell this company does huge re research before you get something. You know, uh, so yeah. I don't want to spend more time on that. I'm just saying that that, that really opened my mind up um, to, to the fact that plug-ins are here to stay. And, and, you know, my money now is going towards new plug-ins as opposed to new gear. I mean, I have only bought one well two pieces of gear this year one yeah, is a collins those, that i've always those, wanted that was like eighty five thousand dollars right there no man i got it for like i don't know 
2800 but I spent about 50000 to fix it. No, just <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this new, it's actually a new piece of gear. Let me show you. All right. It's called, uh, see that right here? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, uh, the, the resolution, I thought that was uh, Joe Meek, but it's not a Joe Meek. No, it's a Leeson, Leeson Groove compressor, an R124, and my buddy Fletcher said, hey, you want to check out a, you know, this compressor, and I said, all right, I'll play with it for a while, and, you know, compressors that look like that generally are one-trick ponies. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I'm not going to spend money on one trick, not when I got to plug in if I can find it to, to mimic it, but, uh, it was really impressive. I could, it sounds like the modified Abbey Road, which I have, version of the Altec. Wow. And I have two different modifications. I have two Altecs, both modified a bit differently. And um, not only does this sound like, like a better version of what I have, but it sounds really, really, it, it's got this knob, it's called a threshold, but as you bring it more of the threshold to the clockwise position, it kind of brightens up something. It, it's like it just becomes a bit more exciting. Um, wow. So I don't know. I I said oh, I can't I can't get rid of this now. More exciting? You mean less warm, right? What's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly? Exactly. Well, in which case, I had a lot. Don't of hang up on me, Michael. Don't hang up on me. <laughs> hey, Michael. Uh, being the uh, expert on on browerizing and and MBC that I am I know you well enough to know that that you're not a static uh, in terms of your you're not static in terms of your creativity how has how how has uh, uh, your use of multibus compression the way you do it browerizing how has that changed in the last five or six years what's a little different when I first did the interview for tape op I had been using, I'd already been developing it, and it was to the point where I'd been using it for 10 years. So um, at that point, I was using four buses, which is why it was multi-bus compression, where a lot of people were saying, well, it, that's really cool parallel. Well, it isn't. They're, the source is going in a parallel direction, A, B, C, or D, but unless you're assigning one to both A and B, it's not parallel. Right. Right? You're doing, if I take all the drums and I put it to B, I put the guitars to C, we're not parallel yet. If I take, um, you know, the kick and I put it over to B and C or something, then yeah, you know, then I'm sending it to do two different places. But what I was happening at the time is I had two techniques I was using. I was using the multibus, but that wasn't good enough because I needed to glue. Let me back up a little bit. You know, when I say A, B, C, D, I would take the drums and the bass. I decided if I put that through st sub stereo B, which I have a uh, distressor and my Avalon EQs across, um, then I would take C. C was kind of like the center of the record, so I would throw in like my guitars. Um, it's not frequency dependent, which some people think. It's it's the part of the record, like the bottom of the record, the middle of the record, top of the record, uh, that's still full bandwidth on all those instruments. And then D would be um, something, back then it was maybe a tube limiter or something that I could just add to a sound I wanted just to make it more tubey. And then A was what I started with. I started with a 33609 going into a couple of Poltex. So if anything, if everything went bad, I could always go back to A, the way I traditionally learned how to mix and, not, and skip everything else. Um, but when I was doing all of this and it, had, it was more open, I needed something that, a glue factor. And so I had seen this person, I don't remember when, a long time ago, he used a Q-Send a left and right going to two 1176s, returning to two channels, going to the stereo bus. And when he would bring up, let's say, you know, let's say you'd have a really good guitar sound, and he would start sending, so that was a send return. 
right? right. Sending to a couple of compressors, then you're returning them on a channel. No, no inserts. So when I would send the cue, you know, I'd turn up the level on, let's say, on the guitar going to 1176, it just made that guitar fatter. I thought, wow, this is really great. <laughs> so if, if I had a really good level going and when everything was going and pumping, bringing, it, bringing the volume of the instrument wasn't going to be good because I'd start pushing into the compression too much, I could just send it to the 1176. And understand that, that my approach was, I had to really relearn how to, how to hear because it's all about post-compression. I'm pushing into compression. And I want to find that sweet spot. And when it's sweet, it kind of jobs and gives back. So it, you've got this, um, this bouncing going on, you know, it's pushing and back. If, if I'm pushing too hard, then the compressor just stays there, and it's like you're starting to hit a wall. So that's no good. That's when sounds get small. And if I'm not doing anything, it's no good either because you're not in the sweet spot. So you you try to find the sweet spot within how those compressors are working. And each one, A, B, C, D, they all have a different release rate. They have a different attack. And so one of them might go you know, like this with my drums, while the guitar might be like this. Um, you know, they, they, they each react differently. And so when you send an instrument to that, that's what you're going to be hearing. So that was, that was the essence of, of the MBC. So we call it multibus compression. And then, but as the years went on, I, I wanted to find more ways to get, get this feeling of dynamics going, this perceived dynamics. And so then a, my closest friend David Kahn was doing this thing where he would send his vocal to five different compressors. I thought, wow, that is really over the top. But that's right along my line. <laughs> that's <happened laughs> to me. <laughs> wow. More complicated ways to mix a song. Let me figure out how I can do that. And so, <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> You know, and I, and I was like, well, why five? You know, why not ten? No. I mean, <laughs> That's American. That's five. American. That's American. Five good, ten better. That's right. I'm from Texas. <laughs> we, we do ten. We don't know week five. <laughs> That's horrible, um, Michael. So he explained to I think he actually maybe had three or four, but what he showed me is that each one had a very different tone and different attitude. And when you bring them all up together, you get this comp of a sound that just sounds really big and fat, and it doesn't, it's not killing the meter. It just sounds big in the track. So, well, this is, this is brilliant. And so I started looking at, you know, trying different combinations, and I ended up finding four or five of them that, when working together, each one had a different character. And... You know, some of them were really subtle and some of them were the main sound, but it depends because I have, I'm all coming out of different buses. Michael, so, uh, 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 you're, not, you're not putting the compressors, uh, uh, you're not putting the signal through the compressor serially. You're bringing each compressor back on a different fader and then mixing right. the faders. That's right. So I have five, let's say I have five buses, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And all five buses go to five different compressors. Right, right. And all five compressors come back on channels. Okay. Those channels you. feed strictly the stereo bus, so they're not there's not any more compression going on. Gotcha. Unless I'm doing something to the stereo. And, and are those static? Are those faders? Yep. Those five those faders are static, are, or do you, static. you don't you alter them for a chorus or a verse? No, and I'll tell you why. I, now David would do it differently. He because they're returning. You know, you get the sound you want, and then he would just ride the returns of those five, right? Because group them, in other words. Since you're, since you're sending into those compressors and it's all post-compression, if you lower the vocal a lot, what happens? It changes too much. And if you push it too hard, you now are compressing too hard and you're not going anywhere. But of course, I figured out, you know, a way to do it where I'm just in that sweet spot and it feels great. Wow. So 
Um, you had just said something, and then I was like, I'll tell you why I, I don't do that. Oh, 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 I know. So I wouldn't change in between verse and chorus, because what I've done for years, way before I was doing the, um, all of them, you know, the send return approach, I would always have, I would float a vocal to two buses and bring those two buses back up on two channels and put compressors, different sounding compressors across each one. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I would float them is because as I would float, I could control how much, how hard I'm going to work the compressors from the floating mode mm -hmm. so that I don't have to go back there and, and mess with them. When they're in the insert, if I bring the, the vocal down all the way, there's no compression. If I bring it up too much, it's too much compression. So once I've got that, now I'm working back into the normal pre-compression mode. Right. Am I losing right. anybody here? No, no, getting... not at all. Okay. Not at so, all. So what I would do is I generally, verses generally sound different than choruses. Right. You know, verses might be more intimate. Choruses might be more open and reverby and bright and, you know, battling all the other instruments. And they're probably higher up in their range. So maybe in the verse, you know, a particular compressor that I, I mean, the sound that I have, it'll sound really muddy, so I clean it up. You know, I clear up some 300 and I brighten it so it gets sounds really good and intimate. But with that particular approach, as soon as it hits the chorus, it would sound harsh and, and overly compressed and, you know, it would hurt because it's all about the, the low sound that I'm cleaning up. So I just move over to my other channel where the compressor um, would sound warm, meaning not harsh and bright, when the vocal is pushing, you know, hard vocal. And then, of course, thanks to you, which of course I don't know why I didn't do this years ago, but thanks to your your su your suggestion on side chaining at 4K, um, I mean there's a certain amount of work that Ryan does to DS a sound, but sometimes it's just it, it, it's just best to let that compressor attenuate some of that 4K or 3K, whatever is becoming a little bit too harsh. Mm -hmm. And so I started using doing that too. So you can really push that vocal, and now I've got a sound and maybe more reverb and more spread. And so I've got a, a great sound going for the chorus, and I've got a, a perfect sound going for the for the verse. And then sometimes, you know, if there's if the bridge turns into a really dreamy thing, and and neither neither of them work by just adding some more reverb, I'll bring it up on a third channel. And I'll do something with that. So that's that's uh, that's how I that's how I work the vocals for a song generally. Sometimes the vocal sounds great in verse and chorus, so I leave it. I mean, yeah, yeah. no strict rule. Uh, that's quick, my starting point. A quick clarification: you and I, you and I grew up on SSL, so uh, we oh. use the word float. But someone on the chat room here was just asking, "What does float mean?" But uh, float was a button on uh, what was it, on the old E. Yeah, the float button. It's just another word for sin. Just, just think of <coughs> just think of it as it sending directly it. to something. Yeah, and you're removing it from the stereo bus, but it's still sending to the bus. Yeah, to the buses. Um, one thing you said caught my ear. Uh, uh, this is something I'm still grasping and trying to learn. When I think of dynamics and wanting more dynamics, I don't think about grabbing a compressor. And you said you thought about the compressors as a way to increase the dynamics. Um, that, that just seems counterintuitive to me. I, I, explain that a little bit, Michael, please. Well, it, Explain it in such a way I can steal it and use it today is what I'm asking. <laughs> I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> you owe me one. <laughs> um, well, if you're mixing in pre-compression where you've already squeezed the sound, then how am I going to do this? I'll tell you what, let me, let me go on, let me ask you a simpler one for no, right no, now. I'll, I'll explain this because it's important. Okay. 
if you if you over compress a sound naturally it's going to sound small but what i do is because i'm not already there are exceptions to that i might do it with a bass if it's unruly or i do it with a vocal because i'm looking for certain things which are down the road the basics are more important when by going into post compression i can actually you know, you see a lot of people, they move the fader a tiny little bit. Oh, I, I hate that. that. I, I can't stand that, first of all. Yeah, but I like to dig in. And when I dig in, it, I can feel how I'm working into my compressors. And things just get, get more dynamic. They, they can get louder because I'm riding. I'm not just letting, I'm not static mixing. I, I understand. Okay, I understand now. So, so I'm, I get to... I can be much that's genius. That was that terrifies me to to ride into a compressor, but that's that's genius. I I've got to try that. Well, just keep, you know, and you have to go overboard to know that it's not working anymore. Because when you're doing it wrong, it doesn't get any louder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Good point. And your balls are this big. <laughs> You know. Don't get so, Herb started on balls. We we the FCC came down on us last, last week, week about a couple of knob jokes. I I, I meant tennis balls. Oh, okay, oh, good. Got tennis it, got balls, it, got it. right? Yeah. And and they and you and you squeeze them too much, they get small. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my good friend Dylan wanted me to ask you if you're still using the uh, F16, the Forat F16. Who asked you that? Dylan, one of my my best friends. <laughs> Dylan mixed uh, the, all the Black Eyed Peas records. Great, great engineer. <laughs> oh, I love those records. No, I celebrated the day that my assistant finally talked me into uh, <laughs> into using. At that time, Drumagog had just come out. Uh -huh. I I I can't say enough good things about that four at really yeah, for the been time. When yeah. there was nothing else, it was the best. Ben and, and Bruce were Ben and Bruce were way ahead of their time. Oh, they were just great, and and then they were running a a car wash at the same time. Yeah, right? the car wash on Ventura with the big hand holding up the Corvette like that. Right, right. That's a good so, graphic. Go back to my graphic. There we go. <laughs> so um, spare no expense, Herb. The problem that I had is I had my my tech, Vince Gutman, who built all this gear, I mean, all the racks and everything. Um, he built this MIDI trigger, and or it was an analog in, and and then it would go, and then it would feed the forat. And, but I had to gate sounds, and I had, you know, high pass and low pass to turn the things into, it wasn't actually a MIDI. It just turned into a, I guess eventually it did, but I, I, to get it to there, you know, you had to gate the sounds and, and then the thing would start to screw up and I'd be almost ready to print and then I'd start having missed triggers for hours. I mean, I'd be there like, like 10 seconds from the song is over and we'd have a missed trigger. It, <laughs> it was, it was just, you know, and we're printing the tapes. It's not like you could just. Oh, I, I, I can't begin to tell you. Well, it was like I'd pull out a razor blade and edit the damn thing. Okay. Yeah, but you know when you're doing all the vocal ups and the vocal downs and, and it's, it, anyway, it became just the most frustrating thing. And at the time, uh, Drummer Guy had just come out and my assistant had been trying to tell me for a while now, look, you know, let's move it over to, you know, all your samples over. And the only way you can do that is to, you know, it, there isn't no, there's a MIDI out. That's he, he had his own format, right? In format. So you couldn't just come out of there and into Pro Tools. So finally, I said, all right, if I don't hear the difference, that's fine because I figured the four had such a good sound that no way Pro Tools would match that. But he did a recall where he had already moved all the samples over into Pro Tools and you know onto a hard drive and was triggering with Drumagog. I couldn't hear the difference, so I was like, uh -huh. okay. We're good. And so he spent, I don't know, a weekend or two moving my, some 1,000 samples that I had been wow. popping together for years. Hey, man, and, I'm, I'm, uh, 
try the Steve, uh, Stephen Slate uh, trigger. I, 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 well, that's I, what I have. Oh, okay. So you, 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 I love mi it. you migrated is, from I Drummond. I started, I'm just saying, I started oh. with Drummagog. Oh, okay. But then uh, I, I used, uh, as soon as I started using trigger, it was just fantastic. I mean, again, it's a lot of this setup is done by my assistant, Ryan, but, um, you know, for me, I can just go over there. I've got choice of six samples. He's in the. He's modified a couple of things, you know, for me that everybody can is going to benefit from. The the newest one's going to be what I liked about Drumagog is that you can automate each individual sample. So because there are times where I just want to turn a couple off and right. just bring them up in the chorus or something, and I you know, the only other way to do that is to copy the whole thing over and you know, mute. So. Um, I love Trigger. Hey, I Michael. Great. Uh, earlier, earlier today, you and I were talking about uh, the Bruce Wedeen interview and, and how Bruce uh, goes through great lengths to preserve transients. And, and, and I was discussing with you, like, your philosophy is a little different, and, and it's not a right or wrong thing, because Lord knows Bruce is, is, is incredible, but would it be a fair statement to say that your philosophy is is is, is work with transients on every level, work at, at, at lessening them when you need to, work at, at increasing them when you need to. It, can you amplify that? And is, is that accurate? Yeah, totally. And I, I, you know, I mean, I think if, if somebody wants to ride a vocal without ever using a compressor and it sounds better, by all means, you should do it. You should do whatever feels good. I'm riding the vocal all the time anyway. But let's say, you know, let's, let's just go back to transients. With transients, um, yeah, I'm compressing, but you know what I'm also doing? I, if I'm you putting the snare into bus B, which goes into the distressors and the Avalon EQ, once a song is, is smoking, it feels good, and I feel like it's being held back and there aren't, I'm not getting transients, I just select stereo bus. So now I've got compression and non-compression. And I've got the transients, but it's also holding and being punchy. I get the best of both worlds. You know, and that's not the only option I I mean I can I can get my transients in other forms. So it's it's uh I use everything. I use whatever is available as long as it's feeling good. Um, I of totally believe good, transients because that's exciting, but I also know, you know, the control and the uh, the limitations to, to how much dynamics were allowed by the time it gets mastered. I got gotcha. you. My, my my wingman Herb Trowick, uh tell her t tell Michael what you told me earlier today. Well, we were talking about, about Luther. Luther. Well, uh, when I was um, beginning my uh, career, change that record was so significant. And part of it was the mix. Yeah. It just, it not only did it sound unusual for its time, you had that great Luther velvety thing on top, and this thing at the bottom was just pounding. And it, and it sounded really good on radio, and it sounded really good in clubs, and so on and so forth. So when I was doing the research and found out he did it, it was just incredible. And as I looked at the other records Michael's done, it was just stunning. Speaking of that, Michael, can we uh, bring in what we call our corner office segment? Because our chat room was full of people who want to ask questions and um, so uh, do you mind us bringing a, f a few of those folks in and getting some questions answered? Uh, no, not at all. Great. Do you Great. mind? Do you mind? No, he doesn't mind either. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah, I'm really concerned about uh, And actually, <laughs> what I've noticed here about our show is we are now, and for our, for our audience, we now are starting to keep track of our mixed menagerie. We have Bruce Swedean's grouse or chicken to us. Now we've got we've got Michael Brower's goats. Um, so we're just going to keep track of. Well, our... you know why Michael why Michael loves the, the goat? Please explain it to me because uh, I'm G worried. G O A T, greatest, greatest of, of all time. time. Oh, That's Michael Brower. That's his pet. Absolutely. Drew, what we got you for for our guest? <laughs> hey, Mike. It's like when you said NBC. Does everybody know that it's Michael Brower compression? I was like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I knew that. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> absolutely. We're 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 in acronym heaven here, Michael. Just just so you know, what we got, Drew? Hey, Mike. I uh, got a question here from Morris Mingo. Um, how would you achieve the browerized multi-bus uh, routing setup in the box? 
<laughs> uh, I'm going to jump in here, Michael. Take Michael's that got that on his website. Yeah. If you go check it out, he hasn't updated it in a minute. So the okay. question should be, Michael, when are we going to update that in the website? <laughs> well, I think a better question is, does it work? Okay. And we are now testing it again. I just brought on a, a new second assistant who will eventually become my first assist, assistant. And he's, he's had time to try and, you know, and set it up, um, everything about what I do. And I haven't heard it yet. The issue with using all the different approaches is latency. Now, with Pro Tools, it's an issue. I think that possibly in Nuendo, it isn't, it's hardly an issue because I think they started the whole latency uh, approach or technical addressing of that issue. Um, so uh, I don't really have it on the site yet. I mean, because I haven't heard it for myself work. A lot of people are trying it, and some of them have, to a certain degree, uh, a fair amount of success. I think you have to start off with using. The, the problem is when you get into sec two, two or three layers, if I do a send return that goes to the stereo bus, but I also have that same signal going to another compressor that, that then goes to other layers. I'm sorry, I'm losing all of you right now, but we've discovered that what happens is it, in Pro Tools, it only knows how to go so many layers, and then it gets confused because I'm tricking it, or he thinks I'm trying to trick it. Yeah, I, and so you I, start I, getting some phasing issues. Uh, on, on, uh, on my show, I, I showed a modified version in, in Pro Tools, uh, one of the three or four, show number three or four somewhere that I 100% ripped off from what you were doing. And Pro Tools handled it pretty well. The, oh, that's the, good. The uh, automatic uh, delay compensation, like you said, can be fooled, but you have to you have to you have to know that it exists in order to make it work. It's just, you you can't just hook stuff up. But thanks for that answer, Michael. Well, yeah. yeah, you know what I'd say to his answer is, go to Dave's third show and. <laughs> <laughs> Cool deal. Well, do. once, once I can do it on my own, which is my <laughs> very intention, I've been saying this for a while, I think my assistant's sick of hearing it, but I do plan on, on building a second rig and, and working in the other room where it's going to be somewhat of a hybrid, but for the most part, I want to keep as much in the box. And once I get comfortable with that and know it works, then it's a matter of time when I'll be talking about that. But I'm not going to talk about anything until I know it works for me. Okay, cool deal. Thanks for that, Mike. We're going to venture off from the NBC questions now. So i uh, got a question from Andrew Boss. One of my favorite parts of v uh, Viva La Vida is how intimate and in-your-face Chris, Chris Martin's vocals are without being too aggressive. Can Michael discuss his chain on his vocals? You know, there's a compressor way back. Let me see. <laughs> See where the, see how the lights are changing, like right yeah. here. <laughs> this is great. Wait. Yep. Oh, there you go. See that right there? Yeah, I got Perfect. it. Perfect. That's cool, right? Yeah. That's very, very LSD type. Yeah. yeah. Those things are over. Now, if you move it down to, oh man, it's really weird. It's all backwards. <laughs> there you right go. Right there. There you go. You see this little green thing here. Yep. That's called my Awa Green. Came from Australia, and right below it is Awa Gray. Yep. Awa Gray. Very good. <laughs> and there's pictures of it on my site. Anyway, the green is the one quite often that has this certain presence and brightness without it being too sibilant, which is where the Oxford deesser comes in. <laughs> um, that just gives a great sound and it's it's based on the send return that I've been talking about where I bring up you know the four or five different compressors and get this nice fat intimate sound um, that I'm working and the lack of other stuff on it like reverbs and 
I don't, I'm not using any of that. So if it's dry and intimate, it tends to be present and inviting. Cool. Uh, one more question uh, from Derek Sep Sepnio. Excuse me. Uh, can Michael explain his spider web effect? He builds around the vocals. Are you familiar oh. with this? <laughs> it's funny. Funny he would say that Ben Folds described it that way. He says, he, had, he can never understand how I can make a vocal so loud, but yet it would still be part of the band because it didn't feel like a vocal up. You know what I mean, Dave? Like yeah. A, yeah. He says, it sounds like you, it always sounds like he's got these little, little strings that lead back to the band. And it kind of, in essence, I do quite often because I'll have, I'll have very small amounts of different size chambers on the vocal, unless I don't want any, like the one I just described. But I might have something that's a bit long, a little bit shorter, and then I might have some delays that very just subtle delays that meet me back to the band and they're sharing the reverb will be sharing what the guitar is going into so it doesn't sound isolated you know it doesn't sound like the singer singing in a separate room um, unless I want it to <laughs> um, and so by creating these subtleties and you can make something really loud but it falls back into the band which is you know it just sounds like he's stepping off stage a little bit cool, closer cool. to you as the listener. I love the fact that you describe so many musical concepts in, in visual terms because it seems like, like all of you guys that are really great s seem to kind of think visually uh, as well as think audibly. Are we ready to go? Uh, you want to try that uh, batter's box thing, Michael? I'll try it. I may fail at it, but that's cool. Well, we're, we're, Herb's keeping score, so don't fail. Okay, I'm going to set this up a little bit. Basically, I'm going to rapid fire several different uh, types of tracks to Michael, and Michael is going to just react with a com favorite compressor, favorite EQ, maybe both, maybe just say stupid question, Dave. But uh, we're, we're, you ready to try that, Michael? Stupid question, Dave. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, that scored. That scored pretty high, didn't it, Herb? It was great. It was cool. great. All right, next segment. Um, <laughs> okay, Michael, lead vocal. Or. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was reading my next question. Did you say or? Yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Michael, well, I was doing good. Uh, I was going to try to be, like I uh, telling her, we were trying to be Charlie Rose, and we ended up being Beavis and Butthead. Let me be a little Charlie Rose today. All right, and I'll, I'll try not to be. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Lead vocal. Oh, man. Okay, I'm retarded. Uh, it's, no, that's probably not politically correct. Uh, I would say retro. Retro, Fairchild, Federal. I'd say Federal. Damn, that's a long answer. Okay, let's see if we can speed this up here, Michael. <laughs> yeah, uh, rock, <laughs> rock guitar. Rock guitar? I don't know what that means. Herb wrote rock that guitar. down. Rock guitar. I'd say uh, Helios, oh. 69. Uh, acoustic. API uh, compressor, API... EQ. 2500 and uh, 550. Is it the 550, the one with it? Yeah, no, it's 525. Okay. 525. Okay, man, don't be doing those southern accents, Michael. <laughs> Acoustic piano. That would be LA3A on um, hitting hard and on. Um, Maybe uh, focus right EQ, pushing some good 4K. Cool, cool. Overheads. Fatso. Wow, we had him. that's the first time we mentioned the Fatso today. 
of the room, room mic. Drummer, 69, or uh, Compex. Compex, I knew you were going to say that. Score one for me. Kick. Kick? Hmm? That big one, the big one. The big Sample. Gun. Sample. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Come on, Mike. Be serious now. There's, there's about 10 people still watching. <laughs> they just left. Um, Neve or my Chandler, my Chandler strip. You like that Chandler a lot. Okay. Um, Love that. His original one. It didn't have any boosting in the mid range, only attenuation. Cool. Well, Michael, we're, we're getting close to wind, winding this thing up. Uh, your passion and your, your love of what you do is, uh, is something that I'm going to take home and, and, and understand more about that. Uh, it, it's been inspirational talking to you, my friend. Is there anything that we missed that you wanted to bring up? Will you come back again sometime within the next decade? <laughs> Less than a decade. Okay. I got so many more questions I wanted to ask. You know, I, I think it's just important since I've got everybody's attention that um, mixing is not making things balanced right. It's all about bringing the best out of a song, the, the emotion, the why was it written? Figure out why it was written. And when there's a bridge, why is there a bridge? Usually a bridge is a bridge to something and it must be important. So you want to peak a song to the point where the bridge has a message. And, and be animated. Be more animated in, in your field. Just don't, don't be, there's just nothing worse than being just right and safe and everything in its place. That makes for just a terribly safe right mix. And I can't stand that approach because it's not about that. The song is never, the song wasn't written to be safe, generally. You know, so you, you just want to listen to the lyrics and bring the story out and make sure that the, that the lead vocal leads the song when it's appropriate. Sometimes it's, it's leading a song, sometimes it's just another instrument. But, you know, when it's not part of the groove, make sure you're telling a good story. And you can... You know, by listening to what the story is about, that's going to dictate how aggressive you're going to be with the bottom end or the mid-range or the top, whether it's going to be warm <laughs> or bright. That's you, my message. You said, you said once that, that you like to get the groove feeling good because you can't start on something that doesn't feel good. So if the groove is feeling good, that gives you the foundation to, to start because now you have the right approach to the mix in terms of how you feel about it. Uh, right, but but it doesn't mean that I'm starting with bass and drums. It could be because the rhythm of the guitar and the vocal is feels good to me. I I try to get there as quickly as possible and build from there. That's that's that, that's something I'm definitely going to take away from all of this. Well, M Michael, my friend, uh, the 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 one of your assistants that that introduced us. I can't remember his name, but a big shout out and thanks to him. For, uh, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan, and uh, there was another one too. I, th I thought it was. Kobe or Colby or something? Oh, Kobe. Yeah, big Sorry, shout out. Sorry, he was a former. Uh, he wasn't actually an assistant. I had him sit in and watch a few times. Yeah, uh, I, th I thank him for introducing me to you. And, I uh, thank you, too. I tell you what, my friend, I learned so much, and I really appreciate it. I know, uh, I know you're, you have a bad deadline. You're in the middle of working on some stuff that's very important. And, uh, and for you to give us a couple of hours, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart, Michael. I really appreciate it. Certainly appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. I was very happy to do it, okay. and let's do it again in a couple of months. Okay. Absolutely. And, and while we're talking, I want everybody to go to Michael's website. I'm telling you, it's just, a, it's, 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 uh, when I say it's a, it's a recording engineer's uh, school and one web page and one website, I, I really mean it. I, I've been reading it since I found it about four or five months ago, and it's, it's, uh, it's helped me understand compression. I, I feel like I'm, I'm starting to get compression down little tiny things. Michael talks 
about little tiny things like, 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 like understanding limiting and how to use limiting. There's so many things on that website. The guy that did the tape op interview, I can't remember his name, but he did an excellent Mike Caffrey. Yeah, great interview on Mike. So, it was uh, great. So before we wind up and say goodbye to everybody, uh, and, and please, everybody, understand that I really appreciate you guys watching. It's a lot of fun for me, and, 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 and it makes all of this effort worthwhile, the, 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 the things that you write and say to all of us. And, and say hello to Michael, drop him a line, tell him that you enjoyed what he's doing, and maybe we'll get him on again soon. Herb's got a couple of little pieces of business, and then we're out of here, Herb. What do I have to? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, guys, make sure you go... Um, and look for the the BA giveaway that we're doing. It's a really cool piece of gear. The BA stuff is incredible. The company's so high end and so committed to quality. Um, we're happy to be associated with them, and we're happy that they want to be associated with us. But beyond that, if you have any problems with the giveaway, just go just email information to uh, Pensado's Place at thisweekend.com. But you know, use Twitter, use Facebook, and get in there. It's a cool piece of gear. Other than that, um, we're going to be back next week and keep this rocking, right? You got it. You Thanks, got everybody. It. All right. See bye you guys. Bye.